the Joe Rogan experience. I'm very keen on um, on stacking, you know, in microdosing. That's something that we've had a lot of activity, and I'd like to give you a huge thank you. And this is very sincere to you and to the JRE audience. And Jamie, can we put up that signed the Nature article on microdosing? No worries. And basically, when I was here last, we were talking about microdosing, and I came up with a stack of lion's mane and um, a microdose of psilocybin below the threshold of feeling it, and niacin, nicotinic acid, which is a, a flushing form. And we did a call out for people to join and download an app at microdose.me. It's for iPhones and Droids, so they could measure before and after effects of microdosing. And what we found, and we published this, um, this is the first article that we published, um, and this was in 2019, I believe, oh, 2000, 2021s. Uh, this is on their motivations. If we go to the next article, well, we can stop here for a second. But just look at the, the title here. Adults who microdose psychedelics report health-related motivations and lower levels of anxiety and depression compared to non-microdosers. What does that mean, health-related motivations? Why are you microdosing? Because you are, don't feel creative, because you're depressed, because you have anxiety. This is the extraordinary metric and uh, this is something you may not realize. This majority of this came from your audience, this audience right now. But if you look at that, 4,600 non-microdosers and only 4,000 microdosers. Joe, do you have any idea? We have more citizen scientists who are non-microdosers who jumped into this app. This is why the editors at Nature liked the study because it was called So Well Weighted. Mm. So well weighted because they're the, the non microdosers exceeded in this case, fairly comparable, but 4,653 non microdosers who downloaded the microdose.me app to measure performance and how they felt. So, and Jamie, if we could go to the next. The so next let, one. let's be clear here. Yeah. They, they're non microdosers, but they microdosed for this study. No. Nope. No. Nope. They didn't. All they did is got these, these challenge tests. So Memory they, tests. So they took the 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 app, they downloaded the app, but they didn't do anything to their consciousness. That's, they didn't do any microdosing at all. Okay. So, and this is why they were. And then, why do you the, think so many of them that don't microdose signed up for that? We have no friggin' clue. You you tell us. Wow. I I, I think it may have been citizen scientists who wanted to get a baseline first, and then have just, you considered people lying because they don't want you to know that they microdose? It's anonymous, you know? Yeah, but and people are scared. The, the next one, if you would, with the, the Author graph. correction. Psilocybin microdosers demonstrate greater observed improvements in mood and mental health at one month relative to non-microdosing controls. We had well, a, Why did they have to make a correction? Well, let me show the next slide with a graph. If you can see it. The, um, the reason why is that there was a typo in the original article. Oh. And it's the one with a bar graph, if you can see it. And um, the email list I got, it's a little tough to find the links. Sorry, no worries. Does it... How long have you had this company, Host Defense? I've started that Host Defense brand about 2004, is what I started. I see it. them everywhere now, I see them in health food stores and shit. We're the number one mushroom based immune product line. Get excited for and, you. I yeah, see them. Yeah. Like, Paul. Do you to bring up go, the Paul, go. Okay, this is yeah, we'll just go. This is the okay. this is the app. We can go through the four slides here, that, that'll be great. So, this is the app. Microdose.me. I encourage everyone listening to help us because now the app has been improved. It was a little bit laborious before. We want to go out to three months. We want non microdosers and microdosers, but please, the non microdosers, we need your input. These are challenge tests. And so are, these are acuity tasks? The, acuity tasks? The, yes. The uh, actual app itself? There's vision, hearing, memory. Mm -hmm. Um, there is, um, 
how do you feel, et cetera. So Can we go- I ask you before I forget? Yep. Who was the scientist that uh, ran those studies a long time ago where they showed that uh, psilocybin in low doses uh, increased uh, edge detection, it increased your ability to see whether two parallel lines, one of them had gone off of parallel? I, I do know of the reference. I do not remember. Foreign the, scientists. Yeah. I, I German. Don't, yeah. You're, I, you have a good memory, but better than mine. I don't remember the name of the, yeah. of the scientists. But this is a long time yeah, ago, long right? long time ago, yeah. yeah. This is probably in the, in the 60s or mm-hmm. something like that. So um, and then if we... So, so the, these, these tasks, have they demonstrated that the people that are taking the microdose have better results in these? Absolutely. Are you filtering out for, you know, healthy user bias, IQs, occupations? Um, we, we have, there is, it takes five minutes to enter into the, the data set to create your profile. It's anonymous. You own your data. Uh, it's gone through institutional review boards at the University of British Columbia. Right. It's all been carefully vetted. You own your data. Nobody else gets to see what you've done or your frequency. It asks you your age, actually your income. Uh, your nationality or your did ask your ethic, o- occupation? Did not ask ask occupation. Education, uh, education, yes. Yeah. And whether you have a college degree, high school, or whatever. Um, so we have a tremendous. I mean, we have literally millions and millions of data points. the The data field is so robust. And now we're trying to narrow it to confirm what we saw in the first studies. Microdosing is associated with a massive relief of depression, a relief of anxiety, an increase in mood, and now we have customized it for more, uh, not so much subjective effects, but cognitive demonstrable skill improvement. Because of course people, when the people feel better, they feel better, um, some people could say that's an expectancy or a placebo. It's ironic because it's like a patient coming into a doctor saying, I feel better. And they go, no, you don't. <laughs> you can't feel better. It's mm. placebo. But doctors use expectancy all the time. Every time you go to a doctor, you expect they're going to have a medicine and good medical advice. You want a kind and caring physician. Every time you go to a five or four star restaurant, you expect the food's going to be good. So you can't, we're humans, we're complex. You can't divorce one's motivation for getting a treatment away from the expectancy effect on that treatment. Right. So, does the expectancy enhance the medicine? That's the question. Uh, if people are not depressed, not less prone to suicide, and you save them from suicide, isn't that what physicians want to do? They want to help their patients be better. So the, the stacking results, though, is what we found to be most surprising and Can I ask most you this? extraordinary. Do, do you uh, measure? Do do you ask the people to go through the visual acuity or the the different tasks uh, sober first to get a baseline, and then see if there's improvement from microdosing, or do you just show that the group that microdoses has higher levels of proficiency? You know, I don't think we ask them the question if they're sober at the time they take the test. But not even sober, uh, because we're talking about microdosing. Right? Microdosing, so, so, yeah. but, but, but but if they've you, been. But did you ask them? Like, they, they use marijuana. No, but no. Does drink. it measure? Does it measure the difference between them before microdosing and them after microdosing? Yes, it does. It does. So, yes. so you had a baseline. So before you ever microdose, I'd like you to take these tasks and do these puzzles and whatever, whatever. What kind yeah. of things do you have? Visual. Well, we have visual. We have cognitive uh, uh, tests. We have acuity tests. We have hearing. Hearing. Uh, yeah, hearing. Yeah, are you so, using headphones? You, are you using just speaker yeah, there's, off there's, the phone? Yeah, there are tones off off the phone. So you'd be able whether you can hear things as a as an auditory uh, a challenge. Is it dependent upon the volume of the phone? It, you asked? That's, you're asking really really good questions the because of the type of phone, the type of speaker, yeah. whether it's iPhone 12 or iPhone right. 15. The newer phones are yeah, much better. Yeah, it, it gets much more complicated. Yeah. Um, than the other tests, and so we have a. It's narrowed down now. What we really want is people to go for three months. So the signal that we got in 30 days was extremely strong. But we need to be able to repeat the results to, to confirm. And then we want to extend the microdosing window of testing to three months. Now people only need to, once they get their baseline, 
they only need to report once every two weeks or once a month. So it's a much less burdensome for the people joining Microdose.me to perform the task. They can see their results compared to the average. So there's a dashboard that's present so they can see where they are relative to the average. Um, and eventually they will have access to all their own data. But it's all anonymized, it's all protected. It's on servers in British Columbia. So it's all you know, tightly controlled so the anonymity uh, is, is assured. Jamie, are you able to find that, that chart? Well, I don't know, I'll be honest with you. Let, let's go back to um, the next slide if you could, next one. Next one, it's the finger tapping test. Yep. This, let me just, okay, this is the one I want us to focus on. This is, is why there was an author correction. The p-value of significance here is 0 0.004. That means there's one chance in 250 that this, this is a random result. This was published in Nature, scientific reports, went through peer review. We didn't see any increase. The tap test is how often you can tap your two fingers together in 10 seconds. Mm. For those of you who have traumatic brain injury, and you probably know a number of these people, traditionally they do a tap test. Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, they do tap tests. Unfortunately, there's a steady decline. But the tap test has been invalidated, and just another article came out this past week saying that uh, handheld devices are validated medically now for patient reports. So this is the chart that blew all of us away, is that the green line is people taking the stamen stack, which is Psilocybe cubensis, approximately one-tenth of a dried gram, 500 milligrams of lion's mane mycelium, and 50 milligrams of flushing niacin, those three together. Now, the non-microdosers, you can see, over 30 days, no significant increase in the tap testing. Microdosers only with psilocybin, the blue line. Psilocybin only, not statistically significant. But those people who are taking the stack went from tapping 48 taps in 10 seconds to 68 taps in one month. Wow. Think about that. Think if you're on a computer, you're right. a guitar player, right. you're a drummer. Right. Think about walking to the bathroom and not falling. Yeah. Think about this, this is not subjective. This is an affirmation of an improvement in psychomotor performance. Wow. Now here, you'll ask me the question athletic again. Yeah, athletic performance, how does this work? We don't know how it works. We just know that it does work. Wow. So we want to extend this out to 90 days. We want to see maybe the, the microdosis with psilocybin blue only. Maybe that just starts to uptick. Maybe it's the delayed and then it increases. Mm -hmm. we, maybe this, this, this green line with the stem on stock, maybe it ameliorates and, and softens or maybe it accelerates. But I looked this up and for you to do the tap test, involves six regions of your brain. You look at your fingers, you, I, you ideate, mm -hmm. you look at your fingers, you start your psychomotor cadence, you get a feedback from touching the table, and that feeds you back, and then you develop a rhythm. A rhythm. And so we, we let people tap test for several days so they go up the learning curve, so we don't include them in the first several days, and then, then people that they practice, but then we see this result. So I think we're onto something really exciting here. With that value of P is 0 0.004, one chance in 250, it's, it's very hard. I mean, you can't say it's expectancy. You can't say it's placebo. It's a performance skill that's being right. demonstrated. So now I chose niacin because psilocybin is a vasoconstrictor, niacin is a vasodilator. I chose the flushing form of niacin because you tingle. And I thought, wow, if we give the neurogenic, uh, neurogenic benefits of psilocybin, let's get it to the endpoints of the peripheral nervous system. Neuropathies oftentimes present themselves as the deadening of the fingertips and the toes. So with the vasodilation, you get more blood flow to where the neuropathy is occurring. Mm. Um, and then li lion's mane, well demonstrated. Again, mushroomreferences.com, you can, uh, you know, many, many references up showing that lion's mane mycelium contains these compounds called arenacines that rebuilds 
helps rebuild myelin on the axons of nerves to uh, enable signal trans transmission and also stimulates NGFs, nerve growth factors, for the proliferation and the extension of the neurites to further grow. So I stack those three together. And again, I have, I'm a co-author in the paper. I had no access to this data. Uh, 